Good morning. Welcome everyone to our worship service and a special welcome to those who are watching from home. Few things this morning that I want to mention. Last week we did our Star Words and if you weren't here um, to pick up your Star Word, there's still some available on the table outside of the church office or you can come in any time during the week, or give me a call if you'd like one dropped off, and um, I can make a special delivery to, uh, to the villa or any of the homes or to your personal residence to do that. want everyone who would like one to be able to access them. A couple other things. Um, our coldest night of the year is coming up. It's February 20th or 21st, and we have a team again. I believe here we will be able to walk in person if you desire through the Y, or you can do a virtual walk, which means that you're just on our team helping with fundraising for the cause, but you don't have to actually go on the walk. And of course, coldest night of the year is to raise funds for homelessness prevention in our community. As well, um, it's very important that our health region is asking for volunteers who would aid in COVID-19 vaccination clinics. So there's a number of um, sort of administrative positions around registering people and giving information and um, talking with them while they're in recovery or waiting after their vaccination. As well, if there are retired nurses around in our community um, who have experience giving vaccines, they are desperately looking for those volunteers as well. So just be aware that there are opportunities if you're interested in helping out in that way. So going to be very important as we gear up for some big vaccination programs here in the coming months. I would also like to invite Gloria Frazier to come up. We would like to acknowledge and thank Gloria for her many years as our memorial fund recorder slash treasurer. So let's show her our appreciation. <laughs> Just a little something. Thank you, Gloria. And to just acknowledge that Barb Wood has taken on that position, and uh, we are thankful that she has volunteered to do that work. Gloria, you have been such a good volunteer to us over the years. I really appreciate it. As we move through the dark and cold of January, let us remember that God comes to us in the night just as he came to Samuel thousands of years ago. We acknowledge that the lands on which we live and worship are the traditional homelands of numerous indigenous peoples. We also acknowledge the long and painful history of relations between the Christian church, colonial settlement practices, and harm to these lands and peoples. We seek to live with respect on the land and in peace and friendship with its peoples. Triune God of love and light, shine your light into our life.
invite you to join with me in saying responsively our call to worship. In this time of icicles, we burrow in dens, yearning to hibernate like most of nature. We have come through the ice, the snow, and the wind. We sing together the glory of our Almighty Creator. Let us worship God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Every time we answer your call, O God, we meet you again as if for the first time. Each moment is a revelation. Each meeting leads to our hearts opening wider to you and to others. Each encounter shines light onto the strength of relationships fostered while following Jesus the Christ the one who invites and equips, the one who is companion and guide, the one who is the giver and gift. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and to join in the choir in singing hymn number 345, Come, Children, Join to Sing. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us turn and greet our neighbors. I invite you to be seated. Rather than having a thought or a quote each week, I thought during this season of Epiphany we might do something a little different. So each week we're going to hear a paraphrase of our focus scripture, 
and we're encouraged to listen for a symbol or a theme. If you'd like, you can write it down or just hold it in your mind. And we're going to flesh out what the meaning of that word or phrase may be for the reading and our lives. So this week, our focus scripture comes from 1 Samuel, and it is the call of Samuel. Samuel lived in the temple with Eli. Eli was old and couldn't see very well. Samuel was Eli's helper. And every day, Samuel lit the lamps in the temple, and every day, Samuel swept the floors, and every day, Samuel prepared the food. Samuel had learned a lot from, about God from Eli, who was a very wise person. And one night, Samuel was asleep on his mat, when suddenly he heard a voice, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli's room. Here I am, did you call me? Samuel asked Eli. Eli woke up. No, he said, I didn't call you. It must have been a dream. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed and tried once again to sleep. But soon he heard the voice calling. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel went back to Eli's room and Eli was again sleeping. And Samuel said, Eli, here I am. I heard you calling. Eli woke up. Samuel, I didn't call you. Please go back to bed. So Samuel once again went back to bed. And then a third time, Samuel heard the voice calling. Samuel, Samuel. Now Samuel was worried. He jumped out of bed and ran quickly to Eli's room. This time Eli said, Samuel, I did not call you, but I think I know who is calling you. If you hear the voice again, say, here I am, am God, I'm listening. What do you want me to do? Now go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed and soon he heard God calling his name again. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel listened and then he said, here I am God, I'm listening, what do you want me to do? And God spoke to Samuel about special things to come. Now Samuel would become God's messenger. So there's a couple of themes or words or phrases that I thought of that stand out in this scripture reading. One is, is the call, right? God calling. And one is night, because this is nighttime that God seems to call. Were there other things that stood out for you in this scripture reading? Not hearing any. Sorry? A child. a child, yes. Samuel being young, as we well know. Listening, yes. Definite theme. Ah. Dedication, that's a good one. How we respond to the call, yes. I think there's maybe a bit of denial there too. Hey, a little bit of avoidance maybe, I don't know, at the beginning where Samuel seems confused, perplexed. Maybe that's another way of putting it about what was happening. So these are good words and, and themes that um, can translate to our everyday lives too, of course. So we're called as people of faith to live our faith, to listen to God at work in our world. That requires listening and responding, 
a level of dedication. And sometimes we're confused, of course, about what it is that we're being called to do or what it is that God is asking from us. Or confused about whether what we hear is God or ourselves or something else, you know. So maybe some doubt in there. And for many of us, night or a time of silence and stillness is a time when we might hear that call. So those are words that I invite you to keep in mind as we go through this service as a way of helping to open up the scriptures and what God is saying through them to us this day. Testament reading is from 1 Samuel 3, verses 1 to 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, 
Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a tr trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Hear the word of God from ages past. I invite you to join with the choir in singing more voices, hymn number 106, I Am the Dream.
Our responsive reading today is Psalm 139. Here we hear about God, how God views us and our relationship with him or a right knowledge of God. O oh God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it, O oh God, completely. You guard me from behind and before and lay your hand upon me. escape from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I take wing with the dawn and alight at the sea's farthest limits, If I say, let the darkness cover me, and my day be turned to night. It was you who formed my inward parts. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being fashioned in secret, intricately woven in the mystery of clay. How deep your desire, designs are to me, O oh God! How great their number! Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Watch closely, lest I follow a path of error. Let us pray. Calling God, your servants are listening. Help us recognize your voice. Help us respond to your instructions with courage and honesty so that we may show love for you and your people. Amen. On the surface, the passage from Samuel seems to be yet another call to discipleship. But this commentary on how God speaks in our lives also contains revelations about family dysfunctions and God's concern for the continuation of the faith. Eli was from the tribe of Levi and well advanced in age but remained the high priest in the temple. He lived in Shiloh, which was the main religious center before the temple was built in Jerusalem. 
and Eli served God well in his positions as judge and high priest. However, we are told that God chooses to punish him and his house because he was too lenient towards his sons. His sons worked in the temple as priests, but did not offer God the proper honor and respect required. This disgraced Eli and reflected poorly on his spiritual leadership as he did not properly discipline them for their misconduct. Though this passage might lend itself well to a conversation about the importance of parental discipline and raising our children in faith, I'm not going to go there today. You can reflect upon that later on your own if you so desire. Instead, I want to focus on how God comes to us in the night. God speaks to us in times of silence and stillness. God is the epiphany we have just as our minds are winding down to sleep. Sadly, by the time morning comes around, I've often forgotten those incredible thoughts of genius that I had the night before. And I must remember to keep a notebook on my bedside table to jot them down. I'm sure you've had those moments, too, where you think you've got everything figured out, and then you can't remember in the morning what it was that you thought you needed to do. Anyways, God is there. God is revealed in our dreams. God speaks to us through the visions of deceased loved ones present in our sleep, reminding us that love cannot die and life is eternal. In our dreams, God teaches us to forgive past wrongs and motivates us for future endeavors. A huge amount of healing of body, mind, and spirit happens not in our waking, but in our sleeping. God speaks to us when we empty our minds of all the frivolous things of life that tend to busy our thoughts. We can hear the voice of the divine when we focus on our breath or our heartbeat. Meditation or repetitive prayer, you know, repeating that 23rd Psalm or Lord's Prayer or another verse or prayer that just comes to us and we can say automatically without really thinking about it. These are good practices, things to engage in that lead us to feeling more distinctly the presence of God in our midst. This is when we may discover the answers to our profound questions of life. God comes in the night, in the silence and stillness of waking and sleeping and dreaming. Sometimes, like Samuel, we can be slow to realize that it's the voice of God that we're hearing. But luckily, Samuel had Eli there to guide him in being able to be open to hearing God's voice calling. Perhaps we all should more readily respond to God with those words, Here I am, and speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Good words to maybe say as we prepare ourselves in the nighttime for a time of silence or sleep. But this passage isn't just about the voice of God that speaks to all of us, for I believe that in God's own way and in our own way, we all hear that voice of God. But this passage is also about how God speaks particularly clearly to those who will become leaders 
in faith. Prophets of our age who are called to lead us back to the faith when we have been led astray. For Samuel grows up to become a great prophet, and this is only the beginning of the many ways and times that God speaks to him. He was asked to guide the people towards self-reflection, repentance, and honesty. Prophets often aren't the leaders we anticipate, but emerge in unexpected places. One would have presumed that Eli's sons would have been those to receive God's calling, for they were the ones who were supposed to inherit the position of high priest, not Samuel, who isn't even from the tribe of Levi, the priestly tribe. These days, I'm listening for prophets to arise from marginalized communities, from those unexpected places in our world. I say to God, here I am. Help me to hear the messages of Greta Thunberg, Malayla Yousafzai, Elliot Page, Romeo Dallaire, Pope Francis. May these people and others bring us through this time of fear and uncertainty, calling on us to build bridges and ignore the fundamentalist propaganda of derision. According to the Seasons of the Spirit, stories about awakening to God's call foreshadow the ways that God brings us through the unknown. God's ways are mysterious, yes, but these stories hinge on seeking truth and wisdom about ourselves and each other. The unknown does not thwart us. We pursue understanding about God and our call as God's people. May we all awaken to God's call as we seek the greater truth about ourselves and our world so that we can make it through the great unknown in which we are living. Help us to be especially attentive to the small, quiet voice that comes to us in the night and in other times of silence and stillness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our pastoral prayers this day come from a book called Seeing the Christ in Others, and it's entitled, Help Us, Lord, to See You in Dark Places, and it's written by Brenda Hargreaves of England. Let us pray to the Lord, our God. Help us, Lord, to see you in the dark places. Help us to see you where you are not easily seen. We cannot walk forever with the sun on our faces. We cannot walk forever where fields are green. Help us, Lord, to find you in the deep shadows. Help us to find you where you are not easily found. We cannot walk forever in the sweet scented meadows. We cannot walk forever on even ground. It's easy, Lord, to find you in your Bethlehem stable. Easy, Lord, to find you at your nativity. Give us strength and courage, Lord, and so make us able still to be beside you in Gethsemane. Help us, Lord, to find you where the path steepens. Help us, Lord, to find you where we would not readily seek. Help us to find you where the gloom deepens and let us know your presence where the landscape's bleak. It's easy, Lord, 
to find you with your friends all around us, easy to find you where we are most happy to be, but help us to find you where you've already found us. Help us to find you, Lord, on Calvary. Let us just take a moment of silence to offer our personal prayers to God. Let us bind these prayers together, said in the silence of our hearts and minds, as we join in saying the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and to join in singing once again hymn number 79, Arise, Your Light is Come. lost our connection there. Sorry about that. Let us go forth in the name of Abba God, Mother Spirit and Brother Jesus. We go now to fulfill our destiny as beloved children of God. God bless you. God keep you. May God's face shine upon you. Amen.
Thank you.